Coming up on Crossfire Collectibles, Billy Kessler, a Rashikage apprentice. Custom tutorial. Stick around. What's up and welcome to Crossfire Collectibles. Today's video, we're going to be doing a custom tutorial and review on Billy Kessler, a Rashikage apprentice. So, uh, we already have Billy Arbach, you know, the FSS version. Um, we did do a custom of him as well. But I want to go ahead and tackle the Rashikage apprentice version. So, for this, uh, we'll be doing Billy in a white gi. You know, he'll have some... Uh, I guess shoulder and leg straps, uh, who have a sword and a holstered gun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go over these parts with you, as well as the markers we're going to use, and then we're going to get right into it. So um, first off, we want to go ahead and explain how we're going to do the body. So like I said, we want to do the Arashikage Apprentice, and with that, we need a white gi. So for the figure that you see in front of you, which I have partially assembled, and we'll do a little bit more, starting at the top, we have the upper torso and waist. So we're actually gonna use those parts from a Storm Shadow version 40. That was a POC Storm Shadow. Uh, it had like a, I think it was like whirlwind kicked, something like that. But um, there's a little mechanism which we have right here. So we'll see how that looks after we paint that up. All right, for the lower part, we have those legs and the legs belong to Snake Eyes version 48. That was a Rise of Cobra figure. Um, I figured that, you know, the legs look pretty good compared to, you know, the pictures I've seen of, you know, the comic version of Billy. And I think they match up pretty well. Uh, the upper arms. We actually pre-did this prior to the video. We actually took the upper arms from Null version 1. And that was from the BBTS Dreadnought 7 pack. Uh, the lower arms that are on there, we took those from... The 25th anniversary Storm Shadow version 21. So we went ahead and just uh, heated them up prior to this video, plugged them in, you know, to save a little time. We may have to paint these uh, the wrist wraps a little bit. They are kind of darkened over the years, so we'll probably get to that. And then finally, we have a custom head here. So this we got from Avax Lab, and uh, it's a different take on the, uh, you know, what we've seen already, you know, with the FSS version. This one has more of a uh, Snake Plissken look to it, but, you know, it's another Billy. So, I think that one will work for this. We'll probably also have to take a little uh, Sculpey or, or some modeling clay and uh, make that neck a little bit higher. Alright, so next we got our markers. Alright, so for a few parts, we're going to need a brown. And here is a Gundam Marker GM-186. This is a red brown. We're going to use this on... I guess the uh, lower legs, around the boots and feet, and knee pads. Next we have Gundam Marker Fine Point Black. We'll need this probably for the eye patch on Billy. And I don't think anything else really needs that. And next we have a Gundam Real Touch Brown. And this is what we're going to use for Billy's hair. Next, Gundam Real Touch Pink, which we'll use for the lips. Then we have a Gundam Fine Point Brown, and we'll probably do this. If we can't use the Real Touch for the eyebrows, we'll go ahead and just do this, and we'll also give a little eye color. We have our white highlight pen for the eye whites themselves. We have a model marker flesh tone that we're going to use for the neck. So once we're ready to color that in, we're going to go and use this to match the skin on the arms and the head. And then finally, we have our Gundam 30 minute missions marker TM07, and this is going to be our white. All right, so we got everything ready to go and we're going to go ahead and get into it. But first, please subscribe to the channel. All right, so we do have some weapons set aside and I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. Um, this sheath has a little peg on it. 
but I'm thinking I'm just gonna cut that off and break out some Gorilla Glue and we'll glue that directly to the back of this chest and shoulder harness because there is no hole in it. So we would probably do something like that, but we'll do that at the end. And I'll show you our little holster real quick with our pistol that we're gonna use. This is more of a revolver style. So I think that'll look pretty neat. And here is our kind of like a, almost like paratrooper leggings, but you know, it's got the strap around the thighs, the drop straps and the belt. And we'll put that on him when he's ready for it. The arms, uh, we may go ahead and do these first because I want to break out the white out first because the white is the most that we have to do on this figure. So we're going to go ahead and get those wrist wraps, put the head aside because we'll do that later. And we have to do these thighs, uh, kind of like the upper right around the knee area of the pants. We have to do the waist and the chest, the torso. All right, so we're going to take the stand off. Uh, get the figure's pieces set apart and go ahead and separate these legs and take those off make sure that we got everything separated so we can move about this pretty fast and got that and now we're going to bring in our plate and we're going to start painting so uh, first i think we're going to just do the waist and get that done so we will need our Gundam Marker TM07 white and we'll give it a shake and we're going to start painting. Alright, so we have kind of a base coat down. Um, we're going to set that aside. I believe we're going to have to do a second coat on that. Um, I'm not able to get all the edges because I ran out of room and we're gonna have to just, just let that dry and uh, we'll move on to the next piece. So to make it easy, we're gonna go ahead and do the front part of the torso. All right, and we have a base go down on the upper front torso. So we'll go ahead and set that down, get some of this paint off my fingers. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the back of the torso. And for this, I'm likely gonna run out of finger room again so we'll probably have to do this in two sections. So we'll do the top part first and then the bottom part after that's dry. Okay, so we got the upper part of the back torso done and we're gonna go ahead and sit that down and let that dry. I'm hoping that this white will turn out the way I want to. Um, it's gonna be bleeding through quite a bit, you know, with the underneath colors. However, I think that might work to maybe give it a little wrinkle effect and maybe some weathering. So we'll see how it, does, how it works with that. But um, while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the arms and we're gonna go over, do a once over on these wrist wraps. All right, so we got the left arm done. And um, I think that looks pretty good. It's more or less of a, uh, a more brightening up from the old version. And now we're going to move on to the right arm. Okay, and there is our right arm. So now we'll set that down to let dry. And then we are going to move over to the legs. So we're gonna start with his left leg and I just need to get the inner thigh done first and like the others um, we're gonna have to do this in two parts so I can hold half let that dry and then I'll go back and do the other okay there's half of that done so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the upper outer left thigh All right, so there is the outer upper left thigh. Now we're gonna go ahead and move down and try to get around all of the black, you know, at the top of the shin and behind the knee. All right, so there is his left upper shin done. Um, it's not the prettiest, you know, I th I'm definitely thinking I'm going to have to do a second coat, but, uh, 
we went ahead and went around it twice just to you know try to let that white sink in it seems like once it dries it um it allows a little more to get added onto it so while that's off to the side we're going to bring in the right leg and uh we're going to do this all at once so we're going to start with the uh inner thigh the outer thigh and then the lower leg okay so we have the legs painted at least the first coat so i'm a little skeptical if that white is actually going to sit with a, a first coat on some of these pieces so we're going to sit there and just let them dry totally for a few minutes and then we'll actually go back to the legs in a bit but first i want to check on some of the other pieces i did so we're going to pull out the torso feel around on the back and that is dry to the touch so now we're going to go ahead and finish off the rest of the first parts that we did All right, so now while we got some of that done, we're gonna go ahead and sit back and let this dry a bit and we're gonna take a short break. All right, so while those pieces continue to dry, we're gonna go ahead and bring in a second plate. And um, I was looking over the sword here, so we're gonna slide that out and that blade is ugly. So we need to touch that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while they dry and I'm gonna bring in this Gundam GM05 Silver. And we're just going to touch that blade up so it looks a lot better and brand new. Alright, so there we go. Blade is touched up. Um, this sword is also going to be temporary until I can find a decent one that will fit. I think this is a bit thin, but I wanted more of a curved katana. So we went with this one. So we'll set that down and let that dry. And then we'll get our silver out of here. And then next, I think we're going to move on to the head. And for this, I want to go ahead and get his face done. Um, we'll do the hair last. This figure's socket on the bottom is a bit open, and it's kind of messy looking, and it will not fit on a Q-tip. So I'll, I guess when I bring the, uh, the Sculpey out, you know, to stick around the neck to fill it out some, I'll go ahead and place some in there and then prop the Q-tip in so I can paint the hair. All right, so we'll bring in our white highlight pen. And we'll give him some white in his eye. Alright, so with that on, we're going to go ahead and let that white dry a bit. And now we're going to move on and we're going to do the patch. So we're going to bring in our fine tip black. And go ahead and color that in. Alright. So we got the patch done for the most part, and that's about as comfortable as I want to get to the skin. So we do have a little bit of a gap in between the, uh, the strap and the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, touch that up. Okay, so we touched up a little around the patch, and now I think uh, that white on that eye should be dry. So I get a paper towel, and we'll go ahead and straighten that up. That straightened up and now we're going to bring in our real touch brown and give him some eye color now we will give him a little eyelash with some black fine point all right there we go he's got an eyeball now added the pupil in there as well um I think we need to just straighten it up a little bit more. We got a little bit of a bleed over here. So we'll go ahead and just uh, scrape some of that out. And that should do it. Okay, so I think that's all right. Now we'll go ahead and uh, put some pink on his lips. All right, so he's got the pink on the lips. I'm actually gonna dab that some because it came out a little thick and there we go so we can still see a little bit of pink in there but we don't have the full you know straight up lipstick look um i want to get up in that hairline some so we're going to go and take a real touch brown 
and see how close up in there we can get very carefully without having to use the q-tip so we'll try some of that all right so i think for the most part we got the face done and then uh we'll just fill in the rest of the hair you know once we have a body to put it on i think that's going to be the easiest way to do that so we're going to put that aside and um, I'm going to continue to let the rest of the white dry a bit longer. So we'll take another break and then we'll be back when we're ready to paint that. All right. So we are back. Um, we had a little bit of a break while we let some stuff dry. Um, I went ahead during that break and I took these, uh, these shoulder harness strap, whatever. And I kind of plucked a hole in it. So I was able to just poke that sheath tab through there. And I won't have to glue it. So that's a plus. That's one uh, less thing that I won't have to do. And it seems to hold pretty good. So pop it in there and it seems good to go. So um, with that being said, I think we're going to go ahead and go ahead and do the brown now. So we need to get the brown on the knee pads and boots right here. So we're going to go ahead and get that done. All right, we got one done. Uh, we had a little bleed with the brown and it ran all over my finger. So we still got to do the toe on that, but luckily the brown dries fast. So we're going to set that down, uh, get my hand, dry it off real quick, because we're going to go ahead and do the other foot. All right, so we got the brown laid on the second foot now, and uh, we're going to go ahead and put that down. We still got to do the toe on that. All right, so while those legs dry, we're going to go ahead and start assembling the body. So we got our torso right here. We put our little uh, spring kick mechanism in there, but this thing might have been shot. So I don't know if I'm actually going to use it. If it works, cool. If not, you know, I'm not really stressed over it. All right, so I've angled the camera a different way. We're going to go ahead and start to assemble the torso. So I have the back down. Um, I got the little spring kick mechanism piece in there. The spring wants to push all over, but I got the waist up on there, the arms to the side, and the front of the torso right here. But I got to do this quick. So I'm going to break out the glue and start to dab a little bit in there. And we're going to go ahead and put this onto the upper part of the torso, all on the inside. So hopefully this will have a nice tight hold. And if it messes up the spring, I'm not stressed on it. I don't plan on playing with the figure and having it, you know, do these whirlwind kicks. But I do want the figure to hold together. All right, so that's that for our glue. And get a grip on this. Kind of bring this this way. And if you guys can see it right, line them arms up. Try to figure out how I can angle this so they don't spin around and come out of place. Got the second one kind of down. And put that on. And give us pressure. Hoping it'll lock into place. Let that glue kind of sink in. And uh, we're going to hold this for a few minutes actually. All right, so we got the torso on. Um, it is separating a little bit at the top, but I think his hair will cover that up, so it's okay. I don't want to put too much pressure on it because it's actually like kind of taking the white out. But um, we're going to go ahead and bring our upper harness in and fold his arms. Go ahead and start sliding them in. Okay, so we got that slid over, and I guess that kind of works. It's uh, actually helping hold the torso together, but there's still that gap in the back, which I'm not, I'm not happy with. So we're gonna go and get them arms back down, straighten that up some. There's a little bit of brown bleeding through, but uh, that's okay. And now just get them arms folded up, and um, I think that's all we need to do for the top for now until we go to that neck. But we're gonna set that back down, and we're gonna finish up the legs. So we got to paint those toes. Um, it's pretty dry to the touch now, so I think we can finish it up. Um, I'll just go ahead and go over this pretty quickly. Um, I'll talk a little bit while we let those dry. So uh, I thought about putting the Arashikage symbol 
on the forearm so you could semi see it. However, you'd only see a portion of it. The uh, Those wrist wraps are kind of, would be um, definitely obstructing it. And I don't know if he actually ever showed his tattoo when he was in a, as an apprentice in the comics. So I don't think we need it. But, you know, it's something we could always do in the future. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, attempt to put on this leg harness here. So there is a button in the front, which is very helpful. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the thighs on while we wait for those lower parts to dry. So we got one side here. And we got the right side right there. Uh, we have... This is the right foot, so I'm going to go ahead and get that right thigh and put a little piece in right here. And we're going to bring that up to right there and push that shut. Uh, the boots aren't all the way dry yet, so I'm going to have to let it sit for a minute. But while we do that, we're going to go ahead and put a couple of screws in. One leg, set him down for a minute, bring the other thigh up, and put that together. Alright, so they're on. Now, um, one thing about these loose legs I wasn't happy with is I, I thought I'd have to go in there and glue them, but then I realized, hey, this, uh, this harness will actually hold them into place so they won't be so wobbly. So we're going to go ahead and take our feet and slide them through the uh, thigh straps. So here and here. And then we'll start to just feed it up. Piss that calf and knee. Up a little more. Up a little more right to about there. And we will snap it shut like that. So there we go. So it's looking pretty good. This is gonna be our base body, I think. And I think it looks all right. Like I said, the leg is gonna be a little loose. I can probably drop some glue in there and it'll help it. But just to be sure, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna add a small drop of glue into the uh, the left thigh area. Pull that aside. Give one little dab. Bloop. All right, so that's in there. And we'll work that around so it has a feel to it. We don't want it too tight though. We don't want it not being able to move. So we're gonna keep wiggling for a second. All right, we've been wiggling for a minute and I can feel the tightness in it. So that's pretty good. And I think we're good with that. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring the stand back out. And we're going to go ahead and plug his feet into it now that the toes are dry. I still have some brown stain on my hand from the leak we had, but I'll get over it. Alright. So there we go. He's coming together. I'm going to try to get that torso pushed back a little bit closer. And here we are so far. Um, I guess we can go ahead and put that sword in. That should be dry by now. And uh, we'll check that out. So, that fits into the sheath nicely. We can have it either way. We can put it, you know, this way or that way. So that works. Straighten his arms out. And I see. So. The little, uh, the whirlwind kick button is working, but I don't know if his legs are actually working with it. So we're not worried about it. And now, um, we're ready for the head. But before we put that on, we need to get out our flesh marker and paint around that neck. So, we got that right here. Give it a little shake. And then we'll simply just add a little bit of that flesh onto that neck. All right, so there we go. That's pretty much what we wanted. You know, we just want to get around the, uh, the neck of that gi. So we have some flesh showing, you know, right around that neck area. Now we need to get our sculpey. 
All right, so I have a small piece of this air drying clay. Um, I'm going to pull a little piece off. And what we're going to do is actually take our head and kind of stuff that in there. Um, we want it all the way in because we don't want any, you know, sticking out once it's ready to go on. So we're just going to push it up in there. This way, when we put the head onto the neck, it'll kind of form around that. And with a little pressure, it'll go around that little ball joint and I'll hold into place. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And there we go. Actually, I'm going to take that back off. We have a little bit come out, so I'm just going to cut that off. So it's right there. And a little bit of excess that I wanted to bleed out, but that's okay. Okay, that's off for now. We'll put the head back on. And there we go. So the head is on. Um, it's pretty centered the way I want. And now we need to let that dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting the top of his head with our brown real touch marker. And um, we'll probably cut it, but we're going to go ahead and come back when it's dry. And I should have most of the hair done, but I will show you a portion of it. All right, so we have our first full coat down and there's a little uh, second coat around, you know, all the edging. So we have that done and um, I will go back and touch that up as well as some of this white, but I'll do that off camera. However, first I want to go ahead and get his pistol attached. So what I did was I kind of shaved down the inside of this a bit to make it a little bit more smoother. And then we're just going to take a small drop of glue. Just come out. Just like that. Spread it some. And then we're going to bring the figure over and find a spot i think right here will work so yeah it's a little low it's not on his waist but that's where we want to put it so i think that looks kind of cool down there he can simply just you know reach down and it's like right at the hand length so that should work out nicely so we'll leave that on there and get that to dry so hopefully it won't take too long so we'll set him back down and um we're going to take a break but during that break, we're going to let him dry and we're going to go ahead and touch up some of that white and a little bit more of the hair. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll be ready to fully assemble him. All right. So I think we're pretty much done with the touch ups. Uh, we had to go around, you know, add some more white in on some areas. Um, put a little bit of black on that upper harness because I had a couple white spots that I had to cover up. Um, the boots, you know, the brown in the boots looks good. Uh, we got the holster on, got the gun in there. Um, did a second coat on the hair, and that turned out pretty well. Uh, I think the one issue I'm having is the split, you know, of the upper torso right around his neck. I couldn't get that to shut all the way, and uh, it's kind of annoying. But um, it's not something I can't fix. I can always go back in later, you know, throw a little bit of uh, that air drying, you know, molding clay that we have, and pry that in there and add a little white over top, and we should be fine. But um, we're going to go ahead and get him thrown up onto the turntable, and then uh, we'll give you some final thoughts. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Be sure to check out our previous videos. A link will always be pinned in the comments. Now, back to G.I. Joe. All right. So here is our custom G.I. Joe Billy Kessler Arashikage Apprentice figure. Uh, I think he turned out pretty good. Um, there is a few flaws, you know, stuff I'm not proud of, but you know, it's mine and I think I'm, I'm, I can live with it. Um, I thought about putting him in a certain type of pose. Um, we did actually have some extra weapons. You know, we got another snake eye sword here. We have a rope sash and we have a pair of nunchucks, but I didn't put any with them. Um, I think that's fine. It almost looks like he's about to go into some kind of like, you know, room where he knows he's going to get ambushed or something like that. He's got his hand ready, you know, to go for that gun. The sword's on his back. He's geared up and he's ready to go. Um, this was a lengthy one. It took almost all day in today's Memorial Day. But uh, we got him finished and I can't wait to put him on the shelf. He's going to look great. Um, the few flaws I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm not happy with the top of the torso. It split at the top, you know, as I was moving his arms around. And that kind of sucks. But uh, like I said, I'll go back in with some of that um, 
that moldy clay and uh, stuff that in there, paint over it white, and uh, it should be good to go. But um, it was fun. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I um, hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. If you did, please, like always, leave that giant thumbs up, subscribe, tickle that bell so you're notified when we post future videos. Be sure to follow us on social media. Happy Memorial Day, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.